How much health is needed to beat the heart? I like to think that I teach people not just how to play this game well, but to how to have fun while playing Slay the Spire, which is a very important thing to do. Because if you're not having fun, then why are you playing a video game? Go mow the lawn or something. Will we still play Clad once Champ Elt's mastered? Yes, for sure. I think Clad is our best bet for mastering Pain, which is still unmastered. And probably Necrodomicurs as well. Patrician way to play. Yeah, go outside, touch grass, and then cut it. Adonis Incarnate, thanks for 50 months, 5 metric years. Holy moly, did you know that before the silent Slade Spire, she was a portrait artist. She used to make daggerotypes for the perfect after image. I love it. Speaking of, do I own anyone in the dead joke? I feel like there were a lot of things that popped up. Let me just check. Yeah, okay. There it is. <laughs> Chunt is on the hunt for a dad joke. Let's go with a... A relatively oldie, but a goodie. What is the Watcher's favorite kind of tea? Divinity. Referee, thanks for six months of support. Yeah, the Ironclad was the first to have all cards mastered, but the last to have all relics mastered. It's always, always fun. So, and in, any adventure through the Spyro is always a, a kind of fun uh, interaction with statistics. Um... You know, the, the draw orders you get, the relics that you find, the enemies that you find, the card rewards. You're always going to get a random sampling of a distribution. And sometimes you're going to get the high end of that distribution. Sometimes you'll get the low end of that distribution for various things within the same run. So you can high roll in one way, low roll in another. But uh, almost never are you average rolling across everything. In fact, that's an extremely unlikely outcome. Or rather, just as just as likely as any other random outcome, but there are so many other configurations then, perfectly average. So you, you usually end up with a really weird time, is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, what's our Act 1 path going to look like? I think it's going to look like... Hmm, I really like this far left path, actually. You don't really get upgrades before that first elite, which is slightly problematic. Any other path that gets upgrades before the elite really doesn't get very many elites at all. Which I don't like. I do like a late shop act one after you've killed several elites and you have about 200 plus gold. Enough to buy a relic. Shops early act one, you don't have enough money for a relic, which I don't like quite as much. Cross up, thanks for the gifted sub. We're going to be seeing some more Brotato on the channel soon. Uh, Brotato's a good time, Noah. Uh, coming to full Steam release, I understand it, on the 23rd. And Kota Cal with a Prime sub. Hope I enjoyed my ISP-mandated vacation. I did, actually, yeah. Other than the... There was a lot of also... Um, loud truck beeping noises. Basically all day. It was the, whatever they were doing was truly grand in scale. The whole neighborhood essentially getting some kind of refit. Um, but yeah, I definitely enjoyed a day off. Even if it wasn't something I actually wanted necessarily. What's with the F? Card remove is basically a relic. That's true. It's, and transform card is basically a card remove. Actually, that's true. Early uh, defender move on Watcher might be very viable here. Who's our act boss again? Guardian? Eh, moderately viable. Why not do both? 
I was eyeing the transform here. Still quite a few cards we have yet to master on uh, on Watcher here. We found out last time we played that even if you have a Runic Pyramid, Double Judgment does not win a run, which is odd. I was pretty sure that Runic Pyramid always won, but turns out that's not the case. Let's transform a defend into a wheel kick. That's a much better early card. Okay, I have no qualms now about uh, tackling this elite without an upgrade. Should be easy peasy. That's a really good card to get this early. It's big damage and card draw at the same time. Something that Watcher can definitely struggle with here. Not quite able to kill the Jawworm turn one. So I think we just play Vigilance and one or maybe two strikes. If I was going to play two strikes, it's better to go Miracle Wheel Kick. Let's do that. Draw towards the... Essentially draw towards getting Eruption back into our hand as quickly as possible, like so. Easy. Don't think there was a better way through this fight, but I definitely could have spent more time thinking about it. That's true of every fight in Slay the Spire, though. How do you master a card? You master a card by winning with two or more of that card in your deck. For us specifically, that means beating A20 Heart, because I am a masochist. Hmm. Interesting first card reward. Watchers usually looking for damage early. That said, because we have the wheel kick added, we definitely can afford one non-damage card in the early game. And I think both Tranquility and Third Eye have purposes here. Tranquility is nice as a get out of wrath free card, essentially. And it's a nice thing to draw into with a wheel kick. Meanwhile, Third Eye replaces our missing block and lets us look for anything we want in the draw pile. The more I think about it, the more I like Third Eye over Tranquility here. This is a really good common card for Watcher and has one of the best upgrades, going to 9 block, Scry 5. Um, generally speaking, I value Scry at 0.75 of a card draw, so this is the, the way I like to describe Third Eye is, imagine if Backflip upgraded to 10 block, draw 3. That's what Third Eye is. So we have the energy. If we play Eruption and then Wheel Kick... I'd like to be able to play Wheel Kick and then Eruption with the Miracle. Let's keep that Miracle. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so if I Wheel Kick, Miracle, Eruption, Strike, Strike, what does that do? We do 15, bringing them to 30. Draw the Eruption, play the Miracle, play the Eruption, bring them to 21. We have two energy left. Yes, that will kill. Good. Lots of ways to get kills quickly on Watcher, and that's definitely what you should be looking to do with this character. Her Wrath Stance doubling damage output is ludicrous. Truly ludicrous. Let's you slap a lot of things. Fun choice here. Sands of Time is definitely in a good early game damage card. Great with a third eye and the wheel kick, I think, too. I'm also eyeing this Fornin Influence, which can create uh, random attacks. Upgraded for an influence is uh, creates a zero cost attack, and that can be very useful indeed. Yes, Faley, that dead joke was uh, delivered. It was a terrific joke. I'll take foreign influence. Oh, that's right. Foreign influence can also make you money because it can generate hand agreed. And I'm very happy to see the lady in blue. I see we're already headed towards eighty percent potion chance drop. Sometimes you just don't get a potion from your first couple dozen combats in Slay the Spire. If the game doesn't feel like giving you potions, you don't get them. Uh, but Lady in Blue will feel like giving us potions if we give her money. And I like, uh, look at... I like just filling the potion slots. I don't think we get a whole lot of value of paying the extra 10 gold here. But give me two potions so that we can kill this first elite without too much difficulty, please. Entropic Brew Ancient Potion. I like where your head's at, lady. Those are some nice potions. Potions 
upon potions. Okay, for an influence. Make Hand of Greed. That's not Hand of Greed, but it is pretty good, so you can stay. Yeah, you can stay. Good times. There's another potion. Okay, we'll discard, I guess, the ancient potion. Keep an explosive potion. 10 damage to all enemies. Very good in the early game. Master Reality is here. If a card is created during combat, upgrade it. Curious with the foreign influence. Uh, more realistically, Empty Fist is solid, letting us get out of a stance. Sash Whip does half decent damage as well. I could also very reasonably see us skipping cards already here. As we started uh, with one replacement starter card, and we've picked up two pretty good cards. I would definitely be happy to skip these. Twenty-five gold. Yeah, Master Reality, definitely the spicy pick here. I don't really see any good reason to pick it up, though. You need more than just one foreign influence to make a Master Reality worth it. Fundamentally, the problem with Master Reality is with uh, with how this card works is that you must draw and play Master Reality, then draw and play a card that creates a card, and then potentially, depending on how that card is created, you must also draw and then play the created card. Three steps of condition to me before this actually does anything. Or you could just have Dead Branch, and then it's pretty good. I don't think I'm going to take any of these. Let's kill some beasts. Some fungi beasts. Let's see, we've got 21 damage in hand. Let's leave you at 6, I suppose. Shouldn't need to use a potion to get through these fights. This is one of the easier fights. Yeah, we just go wheel kick, strike. They never even had a chance. Stance potion. An empty fist Sands of Time signature move or back. So we can take the Sands of Time in addition to the foreign influence. That I can get behind. Can definitely get behind that. Very useful card in the uh Act 1 Elite Fights, and probably in this boss fight, too. Sure. Stance Potion's very useful. So is the Explosive Potion, though. I'm wondering if we drink the Entropic Brew here. We only have one Wrath Source. Yes, let's drink the Entropic Brew here for only one potion. It's an Attack Potion. Uh, man. I guess we'll go Stance Potion, Attack Potion two most aggro potions for the elites here, but definitely an, an ocean of potions before us. That's all right. Better to have more po too many potions than too few. And with Eruption turn one and Sands of Time turn one against Gremlin Knob, I'm not even sure this enemy gets to do anything before we, uh, without even having to use a potion. I think we're, we're good here. That's what I'm trying to say. We can do... 52 damage currently. Maybe we do need to use a potion. What does foreign influence say? Tantrum. Core Surge is just good damage, too. So. Uh, let me think real quick. We can go Vigilance, then Tantrum. Back to 2 energy. That doesn't seem like it helps much. Just give me a Core Surge, then. Core Surge could block Volm, that's kind of cool. We can do 22 plus 40, that's on only 62, unfortunately. So we have to use an additional potion, or we have to leave Wrath and try to block... I think we just use the attack potion. Tantrum Sand Strike is enough. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to play that. Because we have to still pay the energy for Tantrum. That was not an upgraded... Um, for an influence, and so it does not create a zero-cost card. We have to pay three energy for Sands of Time, one energy for Strike, one, er one energy for Tantrum. We only have four energy with the Miracle here. Uh, and that, that's a pretty good highlight of why I'm likely to upgrade for an influence. 
first, although I think Eruption and Wheel Kick are also both very good candidates here. But this will most certainly do it. And we get a Stance Potion back, so we needn't even feel particularly bad. Do I want a second Third Eye? A fourth eye, if you will. I think I might, actually. I really like Scry, and I really like two third eyes going into Guardian, and I really like taking a skill from the combat reward of the Gremlin Knob. So, I'll take a third eye. And I ate your sandwich. Thanks for 16 months. What is my favorite sandwich? Hmm, depending on where you fall on the sandwich alignment chart. I might answer that with burritos are my favorite sandwich. But I would also take a uh, grilled cheese with bacon, or more specifically, bacon melt, if you will. Tasty, tasty. Krogs are with almost four years, the 47 months of support. Favorite sandwich is a fresh made apple pie. Mm. <laughs> but it is an ice cream sandwich, a sandwich. Siosa, thanks for the nine months at a prime sub. And is Sands of Time a sandwich? Perhaps a more important question. And Woods, by the way, thank you as well for eight months. Getting close to the metric year. Thanks for all the content and entertainment. You keep watching, I'll keep streaming. Teutonic Night. Appreciate you continually reminding me of one of the classics, Age of Empires 2. Thank you for 26 months of support. And Ulti NG with 10 months, the metric year gets. Thanks for that prime. Currently on A12 with all characters, whereas before you were just floundering. We can't have that. I think I am going to up... Actually, with two stance potions, do I even care about eruption right now? Almost rather upgrade wheel kick. No, let's upgrade foreign influence first. That can save me more than one energy. Hmm. What a curious problem. Twenty three, they say. So I either kill none of them, block for five, take 18 damage, or I stance potion, kill two of them, block for five, take 11 damage. So stance potion saves seven health here. It's likely to save far more than that in either of these fights, so no, do not take damage for this. Also means not playing the eruption. I'm okay with that. Potion chance is pretty low at only 30% here. Slay the Spire, every time you do find a potion after a fight, your potion chance goes up by 10 per uh, Rather, every time you do find a potion, your chance to find another potion goes down by 10%. And every time you don't find a potion, your potion chance goes up. Also by 10%. Essentially guiding you towards finding a medium amount of potions over time. Yeah, that's a wallop and I do like wallop a lot. This card hits hard and gives you block at the same time. One of the watcher specials. Prostrate's also moderately interesting actually, but I have enough block cards that don't also attack. Wrathfire with three months in the Prime sub. Learning new things every stream, heck yeah. The mod that tells us the potion chance as well as a few other things like event chance breakdown is called info mod. 
This one is not available on the Steam Workshop, but is on GitHub through the link there in Twitch chat. Blue Candle, interesting. Normally I skip this relic, but in a world where we're looking to get curses and master those curses, it's pretty tempting. Let's do it. I don't have any expectation this will work for us, but in the off chance it does, I want it to really work for us. All right, find me that sands of time. I think we're gonna keep this till later. The created card is only free on the turn you create it. So we don't want to waste it. Here we go. All right, so next turn, we probably just want to wake with Eruption Strike Wallop. Sands of Time will get further discounted. Perfect wake up hand. Guaranteed perfect. All right, what are you? Die, die, die. Perfect. Also. Time to wake up. I think we keep this miracle in hand. Let's just play the wall up here. 56. So next time, we, if we draw a wheel kick, we can wheel kick in Sands of Time and kill. Uh, what about two strikes in Sands of Time? That also kills, yes? We have 40 plus 12 plus 12. That is 64. Nintendo is 64. Got him. We score a meat on the bone. If our hit points are at or below half... Heal for 12, classic. Master Riyadi says, are you sure you didn't want me? And I say, yes, I'm sure. I want this Meditate instead. Thank you. Martin scores easy with 22 months. Who watches The Watcher? Apparently it's Martin scores easy. JJ Funky Muffins with three as well. Thanks for that prime. What's in the draw pile? Two strikes in an Ascender's Bane. How about we go with don't do that? And do be in calm stance in case we draw vigil uh, in case we draw eruption. That way we can eruption and double damage sands of time immediately. And we do only because we discarded all of the cards. Perfect. Let's do one of my favorite tricks here. Use meditate to return. Actually, no, return eruption, right? Yeah. Potentially wanted to take a little bit of damage so that we can heal with meat on the bone. We can set that up here, actually, right? Half health for us is 34 HP. If we get down to 34, we would heal to 66. No, uh, 46, excuse me. Which is higher than our current health of 39. We take 7, we go to 32. So yeah, one defend will be enough here. Shockingly, still no Hand of Greed appears. Five. Take five brings us to exactly 34. That's perfect. Give me the meat value. I want it. Actually, this could have backfired on me. This hand. Let's be glad it didn't. Duplication Potion, letting us play anything in the deck twice. And Simmering Fury is one of my favorite ways to get Wrath alongside Meditate. Draws extra cards as well, which is kind of cute. Alternately, we could try to take this deck in a Divine Direction with Prostrate. I think Prostrate pairs very well with Meditate, very well with Retaining Damage, and very well with Scry. So there's a lot of reasons to pick up a Prostrate here. Also had a lot of fun with Simmering Fury when I try it out. More card draw is always welcome. I don't know. 
I feel like I can't take neither of these, so let's let's take the Simmering Fury. Let's do it. Looks like we get to face one of each for the three elites here. Kind of neat. So I want to go into Wrath right now. Should perhaps be my first question with the Stance Potion here. This would be the time to use it, Act 1, unless we're keeping this potion till next act. We know we're drawing Wheel Kick next turn. If I'm going to Wheel Kick this one... It doesn't matter if I'm in Wrath or not. I guess I could Wheel Kick the back one instead. Hmm. Could take a fair bit of damage next turn if I do that as well. Let's just kick Wallop you. Stay in calm for the... Uh, stay in neutral stance for the moment. No, I was definitely supposed to Wrath Potion. I guess I still could. We could Wheel Kick Miracle Vigilance Take 2. Or I could look to take approximately 12. That's also a valid option. Actually, if I Wheel Kick Miracle Vigilance, I will take 12. I'll take exactly 12. Hmm. Okay. All for one returns nothing. Might as well just headbutt then. Miracle, Vigilance, Headbutt... What? Next turn I want to... Well, third I won't do anything if I Headbutt a card, huh? Hmm. Well, that's kind of annoying. I guess I headbutt a dazed? Yeah, a dazed. Okay, that's fine. I'll take a little bit more than the meat requires, but that's okay. As we take three on this turn. Excellent. What's in the draw pile? Damage. Ish. So that could be enough damage? Hmm. Go Sans Vigilance, I think. That looks right. What unmastered cards would I like to see this run? I want some curses. Definitely want some curses for this one. Give me back that uh, third eye, actually, because we have the blue candle and we can uh, we can exhaust curses we play or find. There's a lot of value in just getting getting those done this run. Yeah, well, give me Tungsten Rod, and then Necronomicon. That'd be great. Not the world's worst weave with two third eyes, but I think we're, we're, we've are got plenty of cards. That said, Swivel's actually pretty decent as well. A block card that makes our next attack free. Free Sands of Time, free Wheel Kick, free Wallop. All interesting possibilities, but I think we just want fewer cards, not more. Hey, card draw. Oh, here we go. Now the blue candle actually has a purpose. First time we lose health each combat, draw three. We've already got healing per fight sorted out. And we can now play the Ascender's Bane or any other curses that we draw in order to draw more cards. This combination means that, for example, the Writhe curse offered to us in Act 2 would be genuinely very good. As it would be more card draw on turn one. 
we're looking to master rare cards, I see Spirit Shield here for 180. Bit expensive, but still good. Uh, more reasonably, Cut Through Fate on sale, just a very good card. Very likely to get added. There's also Wreath of Flames, which adds damage to one attack. We don't have a lot of good recipients for Wreath of Flames, so I'm probably not going to get it here. And we are definitely going to remove a card. I guess I'll lose one more defend. We've got plenty of block. Yeah, let's lose one more defend. We have just enough to still buy Spirit Shield. Significantly improves our odds of mastering Spirit Shield this run. Potentially worth it. But it also might be worth it to save the cash to try to get a colorless rare card. Or a better relic later on. It is also genuinely a pretty good card in the deck as it is, thanks to our card draw. I don't think it's required, though. I think we have a really good block plan already. Ah. I think I'm going to skip for now. I'm going to keep the cash. And I'm going to upgrade Meditate. Leaving Eruption unupgraded for now. Which I know is... a bit of a faux pas. Uh, yeah, I want to cut through fate next turn. So let's go Wheel Kick, Simmering Fury, and I could Miracle Vigil Vigilance to have more energy next turn. But I don't need more energy next turn. Or do I? No, I don't. Okay, good talk. There it is, the 20 gold we were promised from the beginning. Hand of Greed. Excellent. All is as it should be, then. Make sure we draw Meditate next turn. Love that, but okay. Can always strike Guardian for more draw if we need to. Okay, that's fine. And indeed we do need to. Very well. Um, take this. Aha! You fell for it. third eye as well? I don't think so. I think we just meditate, take a little bit more damage here. I'll be taking this and... this. The Sands of Time is awfully affordable now. Just give you a bonk. Be back for that later. I see. So I could wheel kick to draw for those. Currently we're taking eight. By wheel kick miracle meditate, we'll take seven. And I get to meditate. Okay. Does seem like an improvement. And it looks like next turn we get a hand agreed kill. Although it won't be in wrath, huh? Not with that attitude. Alright, give me Vigilance Third Eye then. Dang it. Uh, we can still kill though, right? We have exactly 46 damage in our hand. All I have to do is take 12 damage. <laughs> That's all. 12 damage for 20 gold turns into more than that for next act. 
I suppose we could also just play the fight a little bit longer and achieve very similar results, huh? Let's do that. Let's card all of that. Let's card those as well. Uh, do this. Okay. Take four. That's a bit better. GG. GG. Vault, Blasphemy, and Conjure Blade. This is not a bad Blasphemy deck, actually. Or a bad Vault deck. Vault making Sands of Time cheaper and making Simmering Fury activate immediately are some notable interactions here. That said, the card that says Unmastered here is Conjure Blade, and I do think that is a tricky one. One I'd like to try to get done. So I think we might be taking the Conjure Blade here. Lambert says, how does life loss in the boss fight translate to life loss at the beginning of the next act? If you're on Ascension 5 or higher, you heal for 75% of your missing hit points. That means that every four damage you, for every four damage that you take during the boss fight, uh, one of that damage will transfer over to the next act. Doesn't matter how much max health you have or what your current health is. One damage from the four damage from the boss equals one health missing at the start of the next act. So Cody, thanks for the eleven months in the prime sub. Almost at the full year. Heck yeah. Best characters for mastering curses. I think Ironclad, because of the exhaust, is definitely a good one. Silent being able to discard is, is pretty meaningful as well. Pyramid is here. So is Coffee Dripper, actually. Hmm. 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 Interesting. More energy definitely makes this deck a lot better. Perhaps more so than the Pyramid does. Is Pyramid considered Retain? No. It is identical to mechanically, but legally distinct from Retain. I think specifically to avoid a couple of broken interactions. Which is interesting. How's it going, Paradox? It's a good day to be slaying. And Brazer, thanks for three months, the brazen support. And I guess there's also Black Star here. But I'm not really considering the Black Star because the deck is in such immediate need of energy, so much high cost cards, so much good card draw. In fact, we have so much card draw that it's making me really consider the Pyramid to be maybe not so necessary. What if we simply remove a few key cards and then we don't need to retain because we are always doing the correct thing? Let's, let's take the Dripper here. I rarely skip Pyramid, but this feels like one of the times to do so. Now, if we picked up the Prostrates and we're going in a Divinity direction, I would have taken Pyramid. But we didn't go the Divinity direction. Do we go the Burning Elite direction? Not sure about that. I think what we want to do is go the To the Shop direction. And remove more cards. Let's start with that. Such a bummer. If only I could draw a few more cards right now. We could get so much more done this turn. Oh, hey. Thanks, Blue Candle, for your contribution. Let's see, I don't want to make a orb slot. I'm going to take the choke here. Even though it's ostensibly worse or whatever. 
should fix that. Hmm, blocking. Bit of a struggle sometimes. A lot of a struggle sometimes. But that's what the meat on the bone is for. For those days you just can't quite get your block going. Ouch. Get expunged, nerd. Halt would be a nice interim block card for more block and wrath specifically. I don't know about it, it though. I think we want upgraded cards. Will the orb slot stay for the rest of the run? Yes. Hence my desire to avoid it. If it stayed only for the fight, I'd be fine with it. Shame, an unmastered curse. Get in here. Now we have a letter opener. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, let's go to the shop. Apotheosis is here, allowing us to upgrade, well, everything. Why is the orb slot saying the whole run a bad thing? People will ask in chat every five minutes where it came from. That's, that's the actual core motivation, I guess, for me. <laughs> ah. Oh, actually, not quite true, AOD7. I was around for the beta. And I can tell you that Originally, Apotheosis was zero cost normally because when colorless cards were first added to Slay the Spire, they did not have upgrades. You could not upgrade colorless cards. It was only the unupgraded version and all colorless cards were zero cost. It was part of the theme that everything colorless be zero cost. So original Apotheosis was zero cost, didn't have an upgrade, period. And yes, it was really, really, really good. It still is. It still is a great card. Oh, there's another wall up here, actually. Hmm. That's kind of hype, actually. Wallop doesn't care if we're frail from the shame. Not that we're ever going to be frail from shame. It's just good, huh? We have four energy? Yeah, give me that. Yeah, where's Necronomicon? Please. Please, Necronomicon. Thank you. Or Hand Agree. I'll take Hand Agree, too. Perfect. Kaka! Nice fight. Value weight gets a little bit better with a uh, letter opener, but only a little bit. Let's see here. I've locked myself into going to another shop. I probably shouldn't have done that. I did want to get access to this path. Let's see. How upgrade important are they? Not very, because of apotheosis. So let's take the extra elite here. We've got really good potions for this elite fight. And that'll give me maybe enough money to do something at the shop. Maybe. Two more events is a chance for an Acronomicon, too. If only a small chance. Shame. Shame, shame. Shame first here. Excellent. Just what I wanted to see. So we do what? Eruption, rebound, the wheel kick. Heck yeah.
I could Miracle Conjure Blade if I wanted to for five. I don't think I want to. I want to go Sansa Time, Miracle Wheel Kick. Perfectly kill those nerds. Get wrecked. Um threes with five months of support. Um fives. Bruno Santos says, how often is giving them the money the correct choice? It's been a long time since I've paid off the, the Red Mask Gang. It's definitely worth it in some situations. I think particularly with very slow scaling or setup heavy decks, which you shouldn't really have going into Act 2, because Act 2 is in general very good at punishing such decks. But for example, slow, slow defect with Frost Orbs and Creative AI or Hello Worlds can really struggle in this fight. Or uh, Silent that's mostly about blocking the enemies can also really struggle with the decks down. Uh, I definitely have a, a couple of moments in my Spire experience where I remember getting completely slaughtered by the Red Mask Gang because I didn't have enough damage output. These days I build such that I almost always win the fight, but if you're not winning the fight, and it's important to be able to evaluate when you can't. If you can't do 80 damage in two turns, you really shouldn't take the fight. Even if you have to pay them, you know, 300 gold, it's better than dying. Which is allegedly pretty bad. So my sources tell me. Looks like we're going to play Wallop. We have to block for 21 now. So I can do Miracle Vigilance. That's enough. That's enough. The letter opener gets the job done there. Generally speaking, I'm very happy when Gremlin Leader attacks you on turn one. Because it means that you're one turn ahead in the fight. Especially if you can block it. Even if you can't block it, you can, you can lose the health. But if you can block it... It's good times. Wallop, Simmering... Actually, no. Eruption. Wallop. Simmering Fury, Strike, and Meditate. Get back cards with which to kill the leader. Let's go aggro here. Anytime Watcher gets a free turn, the enemies are super dead. That's why, Wall That's why a Vault is such a good card. Give yourself a free turn, and then the enemies are super dead. Preserved Insect offered early in this act is excellent news. Means elites are much easier to kill now. Fire Potion ain't too bad. Rushdown gives us card draw for entering Wrath. I'm also pretty happy with Inner Peace here. Draw three if we're in Calm, which we often are. Or Enter Calm if we're not, and we often aren't. I think I'm going to take one Rushdown, but both of these are quite good. What's the flavor text on the Red Mask? This very stylish looking mask belongs to the leader of the Red Mask Bandits. Technically, that makes you the leader now. Because it belongs to you. I think I might like Fire Potion over Stance Potion. Or Act 2 Elites, specifically. Helps me kill a Red Slaver very quickly. I'll do it. Apparitions. Trade our max HP away for the ability to become intangible, lowering all incoming damage down to one. Apparitions can be quite strong, but they also add three cards to your deck, making you have to draw through more cards. And that can be a bit of an issue, especially if you're looking for, say, an Apotheosis. I'm going to refuse here. I would like to keep my max health. the price of buying an apotheosis. We can no longer afford Dolly's Mirror, which could have uh, duplicated either Shame or Conjure Blade, but there's still chances to get 
either of those cards later in the run somehow. At least we didn't get offered the Necronomicon here and then be unable to afford the dupe immediately. That would have been truly tragic. That said, this does seem to me like a sign that we should hold on to our cash for a bit longer. Pendib's kind of nice. Double the damage of every 10th attack. We've got lots of good attacks to double, so I'll take that. Do apparitions make meat on the bone better or worse? I like to think of it as better, usually, because it heals such a much bigger portion of your health and allows you to stay close to full. But you could reasonably make the argument that it's worse because you have less of a, a margin in which to actually use it. I think I want Conjure Blade turn one here, although actually, you know what? Maybe I do. No, we're just going to use that uh, fire potion we picked up. That's what we're going to do. Nerds out of here. That's right. And don't you forget it. Bonk. Is Skewer just a better Conjure Blade? Hmm. You're asking deeply concerning questions. Maybe you wanted that empty mind more, actually. Considering the apotheosis at all. Oh well. That's a problem for future Baylor. the wallop. Then murder. Twice. Get blapped, lady. Ah, there's the empty mine. Okay, this I'll take. Crawl three cards, exit our stance. Loose. Go defend. Line up the Simmering Fury with the Thingamajig. Might as well. Miracle Conjure Blade for three, or just keep the Miracle in hand. We're already going to draw ten, so... Again, having more energy during the Wrath turn seems pretty good. Let's just not forget Conjure Blade here. I just wanted to make room in hand. So this is not the hand we wanted. We're missing both of the wallops and the crush joints. Where are they at? Hmm. Free Sunder seems pretty good. I can make it a Free Sunder with Vulnerable. If I play Defend. Crush Joints. Sunder for 72. Oh. Correct, I guess. Or Calcum is sort of a, a guaranteed block here. And uh, just a casual omniscience in the 
in the card reward. Allowing us to double any card in the draw pile. Very useful with powers in particular. Fear No Evil, not too bad either here. Doom Train with 14 months. Thanks for all the good times and bad jokes. Oh no, you said dad jokes. Well, same difference. Scott Wynn says, if you were to give one character's card to another, what would be the strongest card slash character combination that you can think of? Oh man. Blade Dance on Ironclad is uh, quite something, just for the exhaust interactions. I also like giving Stance Change to one of the other characters, Stance Change on Ironclad. Piercing Whale on Watcher would be very good, especially. Giving Wraith Form to literally anybody, or uh, rather giving Echo Form to any other character. Echo Form on Ironclad would be extra spicy. Ah, oh, can you imagine Echo Form Ironclad? Good lord. Uh, I think uh, heat sinks on most of the other characters would also be very powerful. If we're talking about stealing defect powers, heat sinks is where it's at. Actually, it doesn't kill you. Curious. Take back Eruption and... I guess our best attack is going to be... Let's go with Wheel Kick, actually. Kill the baseball this turn. We scry, gain some block. Third eye, third eye, cut through fate. We have an omniscience too to double this. And it comes in upgraded for free. Not that much of a deal with apotheosis, but still important when considering powers. Normally I would want a mental fortress for this deck, but I think this Nirvana is good enough to serve in the power role, so we're going to take it. We definitely want to add some block powers in order to be able to tackle the late game, specifically the heart as watcher. All but required. Uh, I'm going to recall here. Pen Pen, thanks for 31 months of support. Naloxic says, how much has our win rate been impacted by the Mastery Challenge? Not that much. Not as much as I expected. Oh, nice. Did that in slightly wrong order, but that's okay. Missed just nine damage. Not a big deal. Okay, once again, I don't want an orb slot here. Let's see. This would be a good turn for eruption. Although. Hold on. Hmm. Well, I could Omni the Nirvana in this fight if I want to. There's no wallop in my hand. Can Omni the Conjure Blade, it's not as good as you want it to be. We'll get we have to pay for the omniscience and then the X Goss card works. But it will be two five hit expungers, that's still pretty good. Choices, choices. 
Yeah, Omni Nirvana blocks for quite a lot this turn. It means full blocking this turn is no problem. Let's do that. Vigilance, but that's okay. I don't want to draw the eruption yet. I got this Conjure Blade for now. Pile. I should probably play Empty Mind. Alright, let's go Sands of Time. Meditate both of those cards. Know that even if returned to your hand via Meditate, Sands of Time gets the discount at the end of turn for being retained. Nib Sands of Time with Vulnerable and Wrath for casual 117 damage. Like you do. Please enjoy getting murdered. Okay, this time we can take the vault without any guilt of conscience. There's also Establishment, which can make cards cheaper when they're retained, either through Meditate or the Sands of Time effect. This could create more energy for us. That said, Vault already does create more energy for us, so why would I use Establishment for energy when I can use Vault for energy? We have four base energy per turn. Vault costs three or two if upgraded. That's energy in my book. And Holy Water is also energy. Instead of one miracle, we have three in our starting hand. I think this is especially good because we can upgrade each of those miracles with Apotheosis to be two energy apiece. And they can all provide energy at the same time to make Conjure Blade pretty good. Empty Cage to dunk two starter cards, also not bad here. Not bad at all. But the Apotheosis plus the Letter Opener I think means Holy Water is exceptional. How are we going to get our hands on a Shame Curse at this point? One wonders. Do I Omni for Apotheosis? Apotheosis. Let's try it. Upgrade those miracles immediately. And I can just keep playing cards. The perfect crime. Or something. death. Nerds. Perseverance. Bit better with a vault. Wouldn't call it amazing here. Still really hoping to get either a shame or a conjure blade, but 
could maybe consider picking up the slowly scaling block card. Definitely has some utility to it. Alright, I'll take one. Just in the off chance we can get that one mastered. We can upgrade all of our cards. We can become cursed with 1999 gold. Or we can fight a boss here. Are the options. There's no shame choice, unfortunately. We've already mastered double normality, so even with the blue candle, I don't think there's a lot of value. Uh, and we'd have to fight the Burning Elite, which could be a super version of Reptomancer before we get to go to a shop. So that's, uh, that's gonna be a no from me. Hey, call me Kaiser. Hello and welcome. Grats on beating A20 for the first time and getting all the achievements. Masterfully done. Summon the biggest blade. So we should probably do a couple points of damage. The big blade. Where's the big blade? what everybody wants to know. Where is it? It's not here, that's where. Anywhere but here. Very tempting omniscience. Deeply, deeply tempting. Right, a pen nibbed uh, expunger will have to do. Get blip lapped, Guardian. GG. Shovel is exciting. We can now dig for relics at rest sites. When you've got an apotheosis, that's pretty solid. And we're offered another cut through fate or an inner piece. I like inner piece. Either it's card draw or it's not being in wrath anymore, and both of those are good times. Maybe I want the cut through fate because of Nirvana? Hmm. No, give me this. And I'll take one more event. Falling. We lose one of our cards here. Conjure Blade, Nirvana, or Sands of Time. I'm sorry, Sands of Time. Your time is up. I actually don't mind that remove too much. That was one of our bigger damage cards, but Conjure Blade is doing the heavy lifting now. There it is. Get those who meditate, I suppose. I have to build the ultimate blade. It's the law. Strength per turn. Interesting. Interesting. Study is also vaguely interesting, providing more card draw over time. Don't think we want like water. Like water and perseverance is too much at the same time. 
too much setup, too much stuff. I do think we want this potion that provides strength. It makes wallops a lot stronger. Very, very good potion for the heart, specifically. I think I'll lose this duplication potion. Keep this fairy for now. I really like having this as a way to guaranteed survive the first attack cycle of heart, for example. with the shame. Actually, no, I want to draw the Contra Blade now. Even better. We'll keep the Foreign Influence for later in the fight. Draw 10. There we go. Hit it a bunch of times, no problem. Again. Can't quite pen nib this. We could get pretty close to killing if only I had one more attack in hand. Get wrecked, transient. Power pot is okay, and there it is, second perseverance. Okay, let's take this. This gains additional block each time we retain it. You don't really love having two of them, but it's part of the challenge, and this is the card we're offered in duplicate. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do you get anything special for killing the transient? Just an in-game achievement. No, uh, no rewards or anything like that. Also a sense of pride at besting them. Stinky. Stinky transient. Okay, these are good cards and all, but what about the block? I like to block. We got wall up here, I guess, for blocking. Now that I think about it. Either meditate or we can vault. Can't do both. I believe I would like to meditate. to the crush joints, primarily. No sign of it yet. Sure, I'll pen nib that. That sounds like a lot of damage. It sure is. Get him. Prostrate's back, but I think we've let the Divinity ship sail. Let's 
skip all that. Make sure we got the key. We did. Excellent. Why can't you simply walk around the large head? This character does not know the meaning of. The same reason you can't say no to the Jack Steeler's drugs, essentially. It's because the player character is so well written. That's why. Also, if you're wondering why we recalled early, it's because we knew we were going to get the shovel. Now we get one extra relic. That is a bottled flame. Do I take it? <laughs> what would we bottle here? We could bottle eruption, wheel kick, wallop, crush joints. Wrong bottle. It's exactly right. Whatever what's in the bottle isn't apotheosis, which is the card we want actually on turn one. Oh, cut through fate. Yes, of course. Cut through fate. Sure. I'll bottle cut through fate. Good reason to upgrade that now, actually. I was going one dead pixel. Welcome from the YouTube. Always a delight to explain my gameplay in such a way that other people can figure out what the heck is going on. Hmm. But I want to draw cards now. Thanks. Destroyed. We do swap stances enough for Flurry of Blows to be a reasonable card, but it's only reasonable. Not uh, particularly helpful. Gonna skip. Gotta take the blue key over a stinky toxic egg. Who needs an egg when you have apotheosis? I mean, come on. Take an extra shop or not? Two shops. What's the point of looking at two shops? Two removes, mostly. Can't get the Dolly's Mirror as we've already seen at this run. I still think we want two shops. Ah. Chemical X to go with our Conjure Blade. Also, Scrawl. Foresight's not bad either. Scry three per turn. It's also block each turn. You play Vault on the Heart, it does not refresh the damage cap. No, MO. Only the Heart's turns are counted. Let's take a co uh, Chemical X here. And now that I think about it, I would like to be able to afford a Conjure Blade in the final shop. So let's not spend any more money here. Just in case. That means not getting this event, which means giving up on double curses. Not that this is very likely to give us a second curse. Eh, let's take the event. Bag of preparation, there's a decent relic. And the event was 222 gold. Okay, that's more gold than the Elite was, so I like it. Dig up a Tori. It's going to make the heart easier to survive. Shovel's been putting in work here. Shovel has been putting in the work. Oh my... Not as much work as Letter Opener has, though. Dang. 
Give me double expungers. Nine times eight. Twice. The power. More letters. 300 damage dealt. The sheer power. said Perseverance wasn't a good card. Get destroyed. <laughs> Tantrum is here. Deal damage a bunch of times, put yourself in wrath, put this card in the draw pile. I don't know. You don't have a talk to the hand. It does scale nice with the uh, Cultist Potion. Establishment is back for an energy creator. Now that we have double Perseverance, actually this is a lot better. All right, I'll take it. And I'm gonna keep digging here. White Bee Statue guarantees a potion after the Spire Elites. You'd love to see it. Music fades immediately. Got any apotheosis in there? Temple of the Nirvana. We'll just discard it for now. Should play ten cards this turn if we can. Let's see, if I play Miracle Miracle, I have four energy left. So yes, I can do that if I want to. I can also just play Conjure Blade now. Won't be good. Oh, we can upgrade the Conjure Blade after creation. That's also pretty good. Let's do that. Maybe let's leave it at eight cards, four cards next turn. Not three ought to be enough. Never liked you neither, Time Eater. Especially not when you do things like this. Ouch. I'm gonna take some damage, that's what I see. I guess we're gonna play Establishment, Nirvana, Simmering Fury. Next turn we can do a lot of damage. We'll let Orichalcum block for us here. Hopefully we're not fighting a weakened one next. Thirty damage six times. Does this does this expunger deal? That's pretty impressive. Actually, I don't get to play it this turn. Do you have to wallop and meditate? I really like Perseverance in conjunction with the Meditate specifically, as if you retain, just like uh, Sands of Time, if you retain the Perseverance back in your hand with the Meditate, it will still scale its block amount, which is very cool. Hmm. Now Omniscience doesn't seem that good anymore. Seventeen blockage. 
a bit iffy. Although, I was wondering if we'd see eruption. Uh, by iffy, I actually meant literally you're dead. You're wrecked. Captain Noobzor, thank you so much for the mini raid. Welcome on in, Noobzor and folks. To a delightful watcher run. You just saw the time eater get expunged. And next up is... The Awakened One. What happens if you vault as the twelfth card, then the turn ends and you get another turn. It's it's a good thing to use vault as the twelfth card. Definitely a good thing. Let's use one more. Perfect. This is Vault Meditate, or uh, Wallet Meditate? Wallet Meditate sounds good. This and this, please. I want to be able to draw through the deck and find exactly the cards that I specify. fire here. Delete a few cards. Interesting. I'm play this at minimum. No, we're not fiend firing now. Do Simmering Fury Vault, Simmering Fury Rushdown Vault. Skip the Nirvana. Actually, that Rushdown didn't help me much. Don't be fooled, I need that. We should be able to Simmering Fury draw back into this stuff. For next turn, where we have to do the real blocking, should be 12 by 4? Yeah, 12 by 4. Not great. We did redraw Perseverance, though. That helps a lot. Should be able also to go Inner Peace Eruption to gain energy here. Off the thingy. And now I can go Perseverance, Defend, Defend, uh, Meditate. Or Defend, Third Eye, Meditate, even better. Give me back this. And... Take that too. With the establishment, we can gradually make the deck cheaper. That can be our scaling in this fight. Of sorts, anyway. those perseverances in my hand for a moment. T 
take one here? That's fine. Please return to me. Empty mind and one of these wallops. Here we go. Go ahead and delete these cards. Probably wanted to keep one of them, the inner piece. The rest were superfluous for this fight, so better to get rid of a bunch than to keep some. I haven't quite had a good opportunity to play Conjure Blade. I feel like it'll be here soon, though. Uh-oh. Houston, we have a problem. Hmm. We are not prepared for this one. Perseverance will keep us minimally alive. That's not ideal, but it'll do. Very well. Very well. We'll get meat value, it's fine. Ouch. Please do draw the meditate. Thank you. Can't play Meditate after Conjure Blade, so it's probably not going to happen. Let's get rid of these. We're entering Wrath next turn, so uh, Crush Joints and this wall up, please. Still can't conjure blade and then meditate, unfortunately. I don't make the rules, but they are some nonsense. Actually, if I Simmering Blade, Simmering Fury Conjure Blade, this works, right? Yeah, this works. Just want to up the Nunchaku a little bit here. Expunged. Wait. Expunged, anyway. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source. Of all these relics. Math, no. Math, yes. Well, one more for the road. Teardrop locket. Now we're calm at the very beginning. Could have had another like water. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. How about a duality? Every time we play an attack, gain one temporary dexterity. That can be quite something. We can afford duality card remove. That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with duality card remove. Sure. So we get uh, Perseverance Mastered if we manage to win this run. Kept the shame because we can remove it with the blue candle. And I'm hoping to use the Cultist Potion on Heart, although 
We do have White Bee Statue guaranteeing a potion drop here, so... Some interesting thoughts. Alright, I'd like to find Apotheosis quickly here. Let's see if it's on top. It is not. So we can Omni for Apotheosis. Or I can use it as a vault. Playing vault with it is pretty good. Do miracle establishment. Omni for vault. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go Vault, I think. We could cut through first, that's true. Let's see what else is on top. Then I'm spending another Miracle. Love that. But I do love digging deeper into the deck. All right. Oh, we are drawing Vault and Scrawl if we want it. Lose the scrawl, just play the bolt here. And yes, the establishment too. Saves me the omniscience, I guess. That's kind of nice. Okay, we would like to block for as close to 11 as possible. I see that we can do that. Although I don't want to retain too many cards either. Hmm. Is on top of the drop pile this time. Empty mind. Empty mind's good. See, I can't meaningfully use these, though. I guess drawing six is fine. Could full block. That's questionable. We're only getting one bonus draw, though. Instead of three. Ah, fine. Knowing that I had more draw coming up, I guess it makes sense. Good. So now do we play Perseverances? There's actually not a lot in my draw pile that can help me here is the problem. Hmm. Yeah, we should probably get some decks before we play attack. But it'll also make sense to play Wheel Kick here. We're not playing Shame immediately because Shame draws three. So we need to have room in hand before we do that. And I'm not playing this Meditate. Or rather, I'm not playing the Inner Peace because I am playing Meditate. So I guess that means I'll strike first. Now we have enough room. Didn't get the Apotheosis, but we could still get it with Wheel Kick. Body Slam looks really good this turn. Especially with Pen Nib. Especially with Pen Nib. Play the blocks first, we have a different problem. Looks like we might want to try killing the spire shield here. Heck. I 
Fine. So we go Simmering Fury. Turn back around with Strike. Unfortunately, we're taking a ton of damage here. That does not bode well for our heart fight, but that's part of why we kept the fairy in a bottle. And why we have the meat on the bone. Ouch. Yeah, if only we'd attacked the uh, spear from turn one, we might have had a slightly better outcome. Emphasis on slightly. to rely on this to be enough. I'm I'm not convinced that this will work. Half health is definitely not where we want it to be. However, Apotheosis turn one is where we want it to be. So that alone is encouraging. Cheaper. I'll take Empty Mind Eruption. I think that's what we want. Empty Mind Eruption. Alright, this is the big attack. I have no idea if we're able to block this or if this is going to have to be our fairy in a bottle. Unclear to me. We can draw a lot of cards this turn. Hey, Ripnator, that's a lot of waffles you got there. Third eye first. Conjure Blade and Omniscience are in the draw pile here. Well, I could definitely summon a very big expunger if I'm willing to use the fairy. Interesting. Big bonk. But can we survive? I don't know. Means we get to scale up the perseverance. This might be the correct play, actually. Could also put double Nirvana in play on the same turn. do it. I don't care about the speed of death damage. Vault is here. Maybe if I pen nibbed the vault somehow. Or pen nibbed the wallop somehow. 
Doesn't seem likely to happen though. See, I think we just do this. Excellent, but it is excellent. Just trust me. Go to the brink here. Or a calcum save me. Next story. I know this gets blocked before a beat of death. Yes, good. Okay, we have a few more turns we have to survive. Just through the next attack cycle, really. Shouldn't be that bad. Smiley face. Hmm. Looks like I don't get to not. Duly noted. Same attack damage headed our way next turn. Seems difficult to block. I'm able to do the wallop thing next turn, which makes me concerned that we might die next turn with this draw pile. Seems really likely, actually. Does that mean we need to vault here? If I do that, how do I survive the multi-attack next turn? It's not looking good here, quite frankly. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're dead. I don't see a way to survive this turn and next turn. Perseverances sure are cooking. We can meditate them back next turn, actually. Oh, maybe that's the way. That's our only real hope, I suppose. Let them cook. This is almost enough without vaulting. Then we're just fine, right? So let's see, I gain 14. How close would this be? Go to 59, 57, 55. Take two. Go to one hit point. Keep the vault. Pick two. Seems like a nice enough draw pile, although I want to reshuffle so that the cut through fate is more functional. Guess we don't need defend. It's six. So I can't do Simmering Fury Meditate, it's gotta be Defend Meditate here. And then, cons more concerningly, we're actually not doing any damage to Heart, which means we have to survive another turn. Which is a very big problem, actually.
should we discard that defend, huh? I guess we need Wallop then. Do Wallop first. Kinda hate that. Yeah, we're too busy defending when we need to be focusing on other stuff right now. And indeed, a pen-nibbed wallop might be one of the only ways to survive here. We can set up that uh, right now if we want to, but we'd have to forfeit a lot of damage this turn. I could also just do 104 with wheel kick right now. Seems like it might be better. Let's do that. And then we want to Simmering Fury Meditate. If we can do exactly 200 damage next turn and the turn after, we can survive by doing only one more turn of blocking. But if it's the multi-hit, 6 by 15, it's going to be an uphill battle to block for that much. Um, that said, we're gaining more and more strength, so the wallops are hitting harder and harder. Which is quite nice. Let's see, there are two stance, stance exit cards in the draw pile. I should probably take inner peace anyway. It is the multi-hit, but I did draw two wallops. So I think we're fine. is the goal. Vigilance gets us there. We also want to cap damage here, so Expunger is happening. That was way too much damage. This is not enough. We actually die if I end turn, because burn brings us to 89 block, and then we take one damage. If only I had one more hit point. <laughs> No, that's fine. We can play we can play Empty Mind into uh, into Third Eye, and that sets us up uh, for next turn as well. That's funny. Uh, keep Third Eye. And shouldn't need Meditate. We should be able to kill, but we can also just block with double perseverances. By the way, these have been very helpful, genuinely. So good for them. Twenty-eight block, let's go. Several chatters would have died there, and I can't blame them. I mean I almost did. There's our expunger with wrath. Excellent. That's what you want to see. Time to get expunged. Remember, don't get over eager. We must play a block card before we expunge, because if we if we kill the heart and beat of death kills us at the same time, that's a loss. GG. We're through it. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next, and don't forget to follow on Twitch to watch the content live. Click the link in the description below.